Hello and welcome to this special broadcast. India is counting down to that big historic move moment as far as space research is concerned. And to discuss that, to share their joy, Space and Technology Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh here with us. Sir, uh, India is excited. We are all counting down to that moment when we touch down the South Pole uh, of Moon. But you must have been speaking to our scientists in ISRO. How's the Josh? No, absolutely, absolutely. And as you rightly said, India is excited. But what is, I think, uh, the best part of it and what is peculiar about this uh, mission is that uh, while India, of course, for obvious reasons, every Indian feels proud and also uh, is, is taking it as, as, as something which is going to enhance his uh, prestige and esteem. But the matter of fact is that actually the entire world is now looking up to Chandrayaan mm -hmm. and uh, they have a lot of expectations. So, there is a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of uh, uh, inquisitiveness, a lot of curiosity because this Chandrayaan series is known to uh, get home inputs which are quite exclusive, which have not been obtained by the earlier missions and that has been the record even with the Chandrayaan 1. We discovered the evidence of the presence of water molecules uh, through spectrometry, uh, which was something new even for the American scientists. Uh, even though they had already landed a human being on the surface of the moon way back in 1969. So, this time as you rightly said, the, the location of this landing is absolutely virgin toward the South Pole, most of the earlier missions have landed close to the equator. So, this is a rather unexplored terrain, maybe slightly difficult terrain as well, but which offers greater avenues and a greater and a larger room for experimentation, both in the terms of the presence or otherwise of uh, water and its ingredients like hydrogen, oxygen, which have some kind of a direct or an incorrect uh, uh, relationship with the compatibility or possibility of human habitat or human life. So, that makes it quite interesting and I would rather say that this is Chandrayaan which for the first time uh, led the world or prompted the world to find scientific answers to the mysteries which had haunted us all the you know through the generations. Uh, it was it is a matter of faction, fiction looking up to moon and imagining if there were people living over there and then literature, poetry, cinema, fantasizing that. Yes. So, for the first time it was Chandrayaan which prompted the scientific world to actually discover scientific answers this way or that way. So, I think that is a huge breakthrough. Sir, but for a layman, if you could help us understand, our people in, in villages, in small towns, they all know that, you know, this is a big moment for India's space research. But how is this going to benefit the common Indian? Why should he or she be excited? You see, there are a number of reasons. Of course, broadly speaking, some people say what happens if it goes there or how does it help us? A, that this is a multifactorial uh, implication. The outcomes are going to be multifactorial. And under Prime Minister Modi, the manner in which the space department, like many other departments, has been opened up, you know, to all these stakeholders. I mean, for example, could you imagine till a few years ago, now we had about more than a thousand media persons watching the launch inside the premises, whereas till a few years ago, they were even forbidden from uh, peeping inside the gate of Syria. So, Prime Minister Modi has done one good thing and that's, that's has enabled us to find a milieu where we could give vent to all our uh, resources, our aptitudes, our talents. And therefore, when today uh, space economy is another, you know, emerging area, even by the, by means so far, even by the means of launching of the European satellites, we have earned more than about uh, 250 million euros or so, and likewise from the American satellites. So we are now launching satellites of the countries which had actually launched themselves in the space much, much more before, much uh, several years before us. Yes. So that is one part. The second part is that now under Prime Minister Modi, since in the last nine, ten years, India has assumed a global role, mm -hmm. and the acceptability of that global role has also occurred. When till about a decade back, we were not taken seriously, whether it was space science, whether it was clean energy, whether it was climate, these were newer or recent issues and India was considered to be alien to them or maybe didn't have the capacity or aptitude to address these issues. Now we are taking a lead. Prime Minister talks about climate in COP meetings. He talks, he, he lays down the net zero target for 2070. And likewise, when he goes to Washington DC, it is the American side which makes the offer for any Indian astronaut to accompany to the space station. So, India not only has assumed a global role, it is now been accepted as a global player rather a global leader. So, what we gather from all our experiments and inferences is actually uh, going to be uh, looked forward to by the rest of the world. So, that is A, because you have to have an esteem, you have to have acceptability, you have to have the, the, the acceptability of 
the nation's leadership by other countries. So that is what is going to be reformed, reiterated by a mission like Chandrayaan. A, B, in the times to come, and this has happened in the last eight, nine years of the Modi government, space technology is not only limited or confined to the launching of rockets, though this makes a good optics, yes. it makes a good imagery and you know, it fantasizes all of us and gives us a sense of pride and excitement. But besides that, space technology in the last few years has entered every Indian household and it has been very appropriately used by this government. Whether it's uh, telemedicine, uh, which you saw during COVID, whether it's uh, digital health, whether it is uh, agriculture, uh, whether it is uh, uh, the, the soil health card, uh, the construction of the smart cities, laying down of the rail tracks, uh, 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 Somit program yes. which yes. revolutionized the entire mapping, the geospatial policy. So the entire economic and infrastructural culture also has undergone a change. And launching of Chandrayaan is one aspect of that, whereas the reflection of it is happening everywhere else. So it is going to be a very important contributor to the economy of India in the years to come. And as Prime Minister keep talking about Avrit Kal 25 years, so in the next 25 years, I, I think one of the areas from the value addition to the economy would come will be the space uh, technology. Besides, of course, our ocean resources, which also remained unexplored by the earlier governments, or our Himalayan resources like the Roma resources. So these are some of the unexplored areas, which are also going to have a huge bearing on the economy of India, on the ease of living of a common citizen by means of all those infrastructural uh, technological uh, means which were not hitherto put to optimum use and overall it will lead to a better socio-economic uh, status as well. Sir, but since the time your government came to power, has this ever been a discussion point about the kind of financial commitment that is required to back this kind of uh, you know space research? Was it ever discussed if it is worth it? No, you are right, you are right because it was not possibly the priority. Mm. If you see those images of Sarabhai carrying a launcher on the bicycle, uh, you would rather feel how much of you know uh, aptitude and how much of talent was uh, caged be behind uh, uh, the deprivation of resources. So, very wisely, I think Prime Minister Modi had the knack to break the taboos of the past wherever he was convinced. And none of us actually would have imagined that someday you know gates of Sri Hari Kota would be open. So, I think a very very path-breaking decision, which was great. I mean, which is directly connected to the funding part, as you mentioned, was opening this area for the private participation, which happened just about three, four years back. And you would imagine what a miraculous difference is made. Within three years, we have about more than 150 private startups, some of them state of art startups, and some of them are making now good fortune, good livelihood, attractive, lucrative uh, livelihood out of this. Then. We have uh, funding also coming uh, and, and then the ancillary uh, steps taken, like for example, the National Research Foundation, the Anusandhan National Research Foundation, which has been recently passed by the Pal, is going to supplement this. The new education policy, which is known as the National Education Policy 2020, has, has provisions for the students to, you know, uh, to build their capacities for this. So all this ecosystem has been created only in the last uh, three, four years. Mm -hmm. And that has also generated increased funding and a huge amount of private participation because I personally believe and I am convinced totally that if we have to move forward and attain that kind of growth which we are meant for, the demarcation between the private and the public has to be done away with. And which has been uh, done away with, with, the, with, the, with the patronage of Prime Minister Modi because the talent was there. The, the, I think what was lacking was at the level of the policy planners or the dispensation, the ruling dispensation. So that enabling milieu is now available to us. So we've gone from strength to strength. Over the last two weeks or more, we've only been, you know, our uh, enthusiasm level has only been upped by ISRO and their post, uh, by them telling the country as to how Chandrayaan-3 is, is navigating. Uh, but can you help us understand, you've been speaking to the scientists there, any anecdote that you can share about what is going on there in, in ISRO at this moment? Nervousness also perhaps? Yes, there are certain moments, you see, when, when the common man sees, for him the excitement lies in the fact that, look here, we were slaves for thousands of years, we were a colony for 200 years, we started off our space journey singing Chanda Mama Dur Ke, and we used to hear about Neil Armstrong long in, landing on the surface of 1969, where we thought it was just far fetched thing, we only sang songs. Uh, uh, in the in the in the you know fantasizing or romanticizing moon in our movies, so there's a there's a sense of a conquest conquest having been won, you know that is a layman's because I am both a layman as well as a member of the scientific. So that is what happens in the layman's mind. 
for a scientist who is actually involved, there are certain moments which he watches with a little more concern. Like for example, as far as I am concerned, uh, for me the most sensitive moment was when the when the Chandrayaan was to move out from the Earth's orbit and, and then ahead the towards orbit. the moon's or with the lunar orbit and then take that trans-lunar route. I mean, that is something like, you know, you change the track while driving. So, suddenly you are asked to change the track, but very carefully that you uh, you smoothly enter into the other track without, you know, meeting any mishap in between. And that happened very smoothly in the middle mid of night that day. But otherwise, the scientists are very, 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 you know, keenly watching these moments. And of course, the yesterday's moment. These are some of the moments for which the scientists have to put in an extra labor. They actually invest not only labor and uh, talent, they invest a huge amount of passion into this. And uh, as far as ISRO is concerned, there is a different kind of a work culture. They work like a family. Uh, there is no super innovation, you know, in the virtual sense. All the retired scientists, the retired chairmen, they keep working as long as they live as a, as a family. Now, even in this, you have all the past chairmen, whether it's Dr. Radha Krishnan, Dr. Kiran Kumar, Rasivan, so all of them there, both in launching in every step. Similarly, they have a certain amount of SOP, you know, which is uh, dedicated to the mission. So, every mission, after launching, after landing, they would go to pay obeisance at Tirupati, they would distribute a laddu, uh, they would not celebrate with champagne, but they have a big laddu which is given to each one. So, it, I think it's a best combination of Indian ethos with the most modern space uh, uh, upgrade, up, up, uh, up, upgraded uh, technology which, which meets any world standard. So, that kind of uh, milieu has been consistently there for the last one month beginning from the uh, 14th of uh, um, uh, July when it was launched. So, all of them are there as a family closely watching helping out each other and uh, trying to also uh, help relieve stress of those who are in the uh, front line. Also relieve stress of those who have seen a setback the last time around. It was heartbreaking to see that moment. And a big challenge is coming now, isn't it? When you have to slow down uh, the lander and that landing itself, technically, we don't understand science, but what we, what we have been given to understand is, it's going to be a big challenge, a big moment. Yes, but of course, uh, one having learned from the experience of the past, as you rightly said, uh, certain amends have been made. Secondly, the structure has been designed in a manner that it acts as a, uh, as a good uh, uh, safeguard for any kind of mishap to happen. And thirdly, the last crucial moment is going to happen when it reaches closer to the, uh, that will happen after, you know, it descends down, maybe this evening or so comes to the nearest uh, orbit. So, but those uh, factors which happened last time have been taken care of. But at the same time, now as coming back to, uh, I mean, this also gets related to what you asked, how do the uh, layman feel and how uh, the, now a common Indian who is, you know, so much, uh, uh, so much overwhelmed with the passion of being an Indian, uh, felt disappointed uh, at what happened with each other. But the scientists working there who has a scientific rationale would not have so because we are aware of the fact that most of the countries, even the so-called advanced countries, we started before us, whether it's the USA, whether it's the erstwhile USSR, never succeeded or hardly succeeded in the first attempt. In fact, many of them have a record of having th three, four attempts before uh, achieving uh, uh, the desired kind of a successful landing. So, from that point of view, our record is much, much better, also because of the better human resource and also we were very good learners from the experience of the others. Which brings me to my next question. When we started off, uh, we were all excited that we are going to be the first to land at the south pole of the moon. Suddenly, Russia has thrown its hat into the game. Uh, how does that change? Does no, it change anything? No, A, that Russia is a, is being a traditional friend. So, I don't think uh, th there is no sense of rivalry uh, happening. So, though, no animosity, A, uh, because there is a natural bond. Second, the first Indian who went into space was again a Soviet the then Soviet uh, uh, ship, uh, it was Rakesh Sharma. Of course, our Gaganyan will be totally Indian and indigenous. That was, so, we already have a collaboration very close, both professional as well as otherwise uh, with the Russians. Third, many of our Gaganyan astronauts uh, had, had, a, had a small stint of exposure in the Gregory Center in uh, Moscow uh, as a part of their training. So, Russia and India and earlier Soviet Union and India have been very close um, as they have been uh, in different sectors, even in the space uh, collaboration. Moreover, they are following a different route. 
not i mean they are, we are not going to cross each other so we'll not so, say hi to each other <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, on the south pole and uh, we have uh, chosen for ourselves a location which would be rather a virgin location so that is also one uh, additional uh, reason why uh, the rest of the world is uh, looking up to what we you know pick up from there mm -hmm. And so, so while uh, you know you just elaborated our equation as far as Russia is concerned, we are also joining hands with United States of America, and we are managing to balance both sides well. Uh, how does that augur for our space research? Mm, I think the foreign experts question, but uh, nonetheless, as somebody says, we are now multi-aligned. So, and that also speaks the other part of it. India is now by being looked up to mm. by every other country. You see, it's no longer the, so that we are uh, uh, looking up to America for clues, cues, or or support the americans look up to us in an equal uh, measure like for example i said when they have a space station which is manned by 15 20 countries it is they who have solicited that our astronauts should be accompanying them mm -hmm. similarly the artemis agreement which has existed there with 2022 countries already there 2025 so they were uh, insisting all along so now is the time has come and again so in the last eight nine years under the present government, that India is being looked up to not only as an equal partner, but in certain ways going, moving ahead of others. Mm -hmm. So I think every country now looks up to to get associated with us, which also gives us a sense of pride and sense of confidence. Right. So next week is very crucial. How have you planned uh, the first half of next week? Will you also be at Tirupati? Will you be cheering our team on at Sri Harikota? No, 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 no. Let's see how it's uh, planned out by the government because it's a whole of government uh, approach. Mm -hmm. It's not only the space department, and of course, it's headed by the Honorable Prime Minister. So, we look forward to. So, could to we the see the Prime Minister also be there in person to cheer uh, no, the I, team on? I, no, I, I'm not, I can't uh, respond to that because they'll take a call, but we always look forward to the Honorable Prime Minister's uh, guidance and uh, his, his, uh, his uh, words of wisdom on all such occasions, and he has never failed us. Right. So, I've had a conversation with you in, in, in your capacity as Science and Technology Minister, but I can't let you go without asking you about Jammu and Kashmir. You're a member of parliament from there. Uh, Jammu and Kashmir is agog. The country is watching what Pakistan is doing. Yasin Malik, a wanted terrorist, his wife is now part of an interim government in Pakistan. What does that say to people who want us to speak to Pakistan, to have a dialogue well, with I the think, country? I think uh, I, without, uh, without uh, risking... Uh, interference into what Pakistan does domestically or Islamabad government does domestically. As far as uh, a terrorist in operating in India is concerned, he is a terrorist for all. So, a terrorist is a terrorist is a terrorist. And uh, the person that you have named is being tried under the rule of law. And again, it has taken more than 30 years for this gentleman and his other colleagues to be brought to book. And that I think the history will sometimes put up these questions why the earlier governments were so uh, liberal about it. It's, uh, in spite of the fact that the, the, the crime committed or the act of terrorism committed was done in daylight and those who got killed in the process were not uh, none other than the, the, some of the Indians in, in, in belt force. So, I think this is something which would have, should have been brought to book long back. So, it, as far as the terrorists are concerned on the soil of India, they are being treated as the terrorists uh, ought to be treated and as Prime Minister Modi has reiterated more than once, zero tolerance for terrorism. So that's the policy India follows, hmm. regardless of what uh, uh, Islamabad does domestically. But, but does it not make it very clear what Islamabad thinks about, you know, Indian sensibilities? Uh, you know, it, that messaging is coming in very clearly from the decision that they have taken. Uh, absolutely, but I am sure the concerned agencies within India, the Ministry of External Affairs take cognizance of all these uh, moves and they accordingly take a stance and a posture. Dr. Jitendra Singh, thank you so much for speaking to us. So, we've discussed geopolitics, but most importantly, we have discussed with the Minister of Science and Technology the excitement, the nervousness and the enthusiasm with which we are all looking at Chandrayaan, at that hello that we will soon hear from Moon's lunar surface.